Saint George was born about 280 AD of a Christian family that was wealthy and of a noble origin in the city of Cappadocia, a city of the Eastern Empire in Asia Minor. He followed the usual career of a young nobleman and joined the Roman army, where his ability and charm brought him quick promotion. The emperor heard about him, and as a result, made him a tribune or an officer in the emperor guard. Dice Lostian gave orders for the issue of a formal indict against the Christians on February 23rd in the year 303 AD. Being the Feast of Terramelia, the provisions of this indict was published on the next day in the marketplace, were as follows. All churches should be leveled to the ground, all sacred books to be burned. All Christians who hold any honourable rank are not only to be degraded, but to be deprived of civil rights. Also, all Christians who are not officials are to be reduced to slavery. In great courage, the young man George pushed his way through the marketplace to read the proclamation, and then, in front of the awe-stricken crown, he deliberately tore down the imperial indict and threw it away. Consequently, he was arrested and brought to the presence of Dioclesian. I am a servant of Christ, my God, and trusting in him, I have come among you voluntarily to bear witness concerning the truth. What is truth? Christ himself, whom you persecuted, is truth. Stunned by the bold speech of the valiant warrior, the emperor, who had loved and promoted George, attempted to persuade him not to throw away his youth and glory and honours, but rather to offer sacrifice to the gods, as was the Roman custom. Nothing in this inconstant life can weaken my resolve to serve God. The emperor began to threaten him with unbearable tortures, and he will inflict on him. You will grow tired of tormenting me sooner than I will tire of being tormented by you. Your Majesty, nothing except sin can destroy the strength and demolish the integrity of this saint. Arrange for a very beautiful woman to spend the night with him in prison and try to debauch him. Saint George, who could only look forward to heavenly joy, began to pray and within a short while he managed to swing her heart the Christian faith. Is there any chance of a salvation for one like myself? Next morning. I found my true bridegroom Jesus Christ. I am Christian. I believe in the God of George. With great courage, she announced her Christianity to the emperor and his men and joined the other saintly martyrs. It is not the purpose of this paper to go through the tortures that were applied to St. George in death, but nevertheless, I wish to bring light to his utmost love for Christ by listing some of them. His body was torn by special instrument that had metal teeth, and our Lord Jesus rose him. After his death, many pagans were converted. He was put in an active line and the water was poured on it. Again, the Lord returned him back to life. At this very moment, it got dark. Thunder boomed, and a voice was heard. 
Fear not, George, for I am with you. Then a wondrous light shone, and at the wheel an angel of the Lord appeared in the form of a radiant youth. He placed his hand upon the martyr, saying to him, Rejoice! St. George stood up, healed. The emperor became very agitated, imagining that the saint was using magic. Bring me my top magician, Athanasios. Prepare a lethal poison to kill St. George. The saint signed over the cup with the sign of the cross before drinking it. Of course no harm came to him. St. George's magic was in fact explained by the sign of the cross itself. Another cup was also given to the saint, but this time with his hands tied behind his back. The saint signed it by his head, saying, Shall I drink it from here, or here, or here, or here? During all these tortures, although the saint had enough pains and sufferings of his own, but nevertheless kept on talking to Dyslossian about the powers of the Christian faith. Do not imagine that it is any human learning which keeps me from being harmed by these torments. I am saved only by calling upon Christ and his power. Whoever believes in him has no regard for tortures and is able to do the things that Christ did. What sort of things Christ had done? He gave sight to the blind cleansed the lepers, healed the lame, gave hearing to the deaf, cast out demons, and raised the dead. Knowing that they had never been able to resurrect the dead through sorcerer, nor by any of the gods known to him, and wanted to test the saint. Could you raise a dead man before my eyes? You wish to tempt me, but my god will work this sign? for the salvation of the people who shall see the power of Christ. St. George prayed to our Lord. O Lord, show to those here present that you are the only God in all the world. Let them know you as the Almighty Lord. Then the earth quaked, a grave opened, the dead one emerged from it alive having seen with their own eyes the power of Christ. The people wept and glorified the true God. Falling down at the feet of Saint George, we believe in Jesus Christ as the all-powerful God. Please pray for us, for your powerful God to forgive us for our sins that we committed in ignorance. Both Athanasius and the man raised from the dead to be beheaded and get George again locked up in prison until we see what we are going to do with him. The miracles of the great martyr Jordan had increased the numbers of Christians. Therefore, Dyslysian made a final attempt to compel the saint to offer sacrifice to the idols. They set up a court at the pagan temple of Apollo. On the final night, the holy martyr prayed prevently and he slept. He saw the Lord who raised him up with his hands and embraced him. The Saviour placed a crown on St. George's head and said, Fear not, but have courage, and you will soon come to me and receive what has been prepared for you. I make a vow by my own name, my beloved George, as among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. Also, they shall not be in the martyrs of those who assemble you, nor will be ever like you. 
I have made you a well-known name in my kingdom, and I have gave grace to your name, and I made it a harbor of salvation for all men, that those who remember your name, of men and women, when they are in all adversities, I respond to them quickly and give them the desire of their hearts. In the morning, the emperor offered to make Saint George his co-administrator, second only to himself. Your Majesty, you should have shown me this mercy from the very beginning, instead of torturing me. Let us go now to the temple and see the gods you worship. Dyslysian believed that the martyr was accepting his offer, and he followed him to the pagan temple. With his ritual and all the people, everyone was certain Saint George would offer sacrifice to the gods. The saint went up to the idol, made the sign of the cross, and addressed it as if it was alive. Are you the one who wants to receive from me sacrifice befitting God? I am not a god, and none of those like me is a god either. The only God is He whom you preach. We are fallen angels and deceive people because we are jealous. How dare you remain here when I, the servant of the true God, have entered? The noises and wailing were heard from the idols. They fell to the ground and were shattered. There was general confusion. In a frenzy, pagan priests and many of the crowd seized the holy martyr, tied him up, and began to beat him. They also called for his immediate execution. O oh God of George, help me, for you alone are all powerful. At the feet of the great martyr, the holy empress confessed Christ. I confess in Jesus Christ, who had humiliated the idols and those who worship. Dites Lucian immediately pronounced the death sentence on the great martyr George and the holy empress Alexin, who followed Saint George to execution without resisting. A long way, she felt faint and slumped against the wall. There, she surrendered her soul to God. Thank you, God. I pray that you would also end my life in a worthy manner, Lord. Would you please forgive the torturers who acted in ignorance, and that please lead them to the knowledge of truth? Calmly and bravely, the holy great martyr George bent his neck beneath the sword, receiving the crown of martyrdom on May first, three hundred and three. May his blessings be with us all. Amen.